Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Modular DIY back in the module building corner. Today I'm building a module from Access Modular. They were kind enough to send this to me and this is the LK Delay. It's looking like a good and simple delay module with an interesting button for locking in feedback for instant, I guess, crazy regeneration of sound. I've been meaning to get around to this for ages, so I'm grabbing a quick five minutes and a coffee. I'm going to give this thing a go. So thanks Axis for sending it to me. I'm much appreciated. Looking forward to hearing its echoes. So this is the front panel. Like I say, good and good and simple. This is the single PCB onto which everything will will be placed. I've got a good feeling about this one. I'm feeling really into this one, particularly just at the moment. This is going to be great. <laughs> I'm feeling energized. I'm like between projects because last night I did this big live stream thing with Moritz and an Erica Synths module. And at the moment, I'm also in the middle of building something quite important, but I'm stuck because there's a, a part that hasn't turned up yet. And so I'm kind of in this, I'm in this eagerness to get on with something. I think this building this module is really going to occupy my mind and my fingers to exactly the right amount of stuff that I want to be doing right now. I'd like to point out the little bit of uh, inscription there is on this PCB, which it says, thank you to my family, thank you to Gaz Williams, and also to Mr. Wigley. Thank you, Thonk. That's really nice. <laughs> it's always interesting, the stories of how we get to where we are. Right. And who influenced us along the way? Always enjoying this packaging. So what we've got in the box, we've got a couple of little envelopes. So that's all the hardware, knobs and pots and stuff. I've got the chips in this little red bag. A couple of capacitors, transistors, power regulators. Oh, that's a nice, look at that for a nice capacitor. Hmm. Assuming that's what that is, of course. Okay, here are all the resistors. Oh, look at that, they're labeled. Oh, now that's pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic unusual <laughs> i would say in my experience but that's good to see and then in this little bag some icy holders the big red button some patch sockets good right the uh, kit came from thonk who are looking after access modulars bits and pieces and that's also where you'll find the build guide and as I say, this is the first kit I've done from Access Modular, so we will be looking quite closely at how well how well they put across the instructions and the guide to building this thing. So lots of hellos and thank yous, which is always good to see. I like to see that. And it says it's not our fault if you kill yourself. Right, great, super. Photos. This is brilliant. Right, okay, like I say, I'm feeling very upbeat already and this is already looking good. So photos of stuff, that's just brilliant. <laughs> so photographs of stuff, so we can see and match up that we have everything we're supposed to have. Now there's a full bill, a bit of materials as well. So it's given us, if we have a look at the PCB, we are getting the names. We're getting the names and numbers of things on here, not their actual values. So we might have to refer to and from the bit of materials to work out what actual value of resistor and bits and pieces goes into the PCB. So, you know, there's always there's always different ways of doing it. Sometimes on a PCB you get the actual value of each resistor printed on here and that does make things that little bit easier. But also it can be difficult to read and so this perhaps is an easier way. And this also gives you a little bit more scope if things change. If they decide to change a value of something in order to, to make it better or to improve the circuit, then you're not having to reprint a whole load of PCBs. You're just changing the value that's on the build guide. So the process. Resistors. Begin your build by populating and soldering all the resistors. Although I've written the values for you, it's still wise to check. Oh yeah, it's wise to check. Of course it is, but that's not us, is it? We don't do that. We just get We just stumble straight in. <laughs> We just assume, we assume that he's written 100k on here and it's right. Should I check? No, I'm going to go, going to go with it. I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do here, now I could theoretically zoom in on here, 
try to match the color of what's on the screen uh, on the photo with the color that's on the resistor. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be slightly more careful because you don't always have the same type of resistor uh, as they do when they make um, the manual for it. So there might be slightly different color variations that can get confusing. So we're going to use the bit of materials to tell us what uh, number resistors are what and we're going to populate it that way. I think that's the best way to do it. So if we're going to do all the resistors, there's not that many. That looks completely possible. Let's turn on the soldier iron. Get myself geared up. So winding back up to a bit of materials. Resistors. So first of all, 100Ks. Here we are. These ones here. So I'm going to take those ends off. These are all 100Ks. There's five of them. Five, yeah, okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold the bodies, bend them all tonight, and then squish them slightly, and then bend them all again. I find that's a very efficient way of bending resistors. So we're looking for R1 as a good start. R1 down here. R6. All the way at the top here. Our 14 and 15. So that's the idea. So I'm going to follow this through, put all the resistors on, and then solder them. That's the plan. I'm just going to get on and do that rather than rabbiting on or talking about nonsense. So populate it all. Follow the bit of materials. So the next one is going to be 120. I'll be able to find that because they're all brilliantly labelled. He says 120, that one is going to go in R2. So on and so forth. And then you turn it over, solder the whole lot, snip the legs off, and I'll see you at the other end of that. There we are. Very easy, simple, straightforward. I love the size of the pads underneath. They're nice and big to get your soldering iron on. So that made soldering that really, really easy. You can compare it to the photo, which is, is brilliant. You can't ask for more than that. Excellent. So you know exactly where you are. You haven't it's not sitting around wondering, oh, I wonder if I did that right. You know that you have. Excellent. So next up is the diodes. Are these the big chunky ones? Do we have any small ones? No, no, it's all about these, these fellas. So these, these here are the big chunky sort of power regulator ones that tend to go near the power socket here, which they do. Locate D3 and D4, there and there. No other diodes? Nope, nope, nice and straightforward. What's important is that you get them round the right way. So you can see on the diode itself, it's got a, a stripe, a silver stripe on this occasion. It's not always silver. And the stripe goes with the stripe that's on the silk screen on the printed PCB. So that goes in that way around. You see how that's lining up? Yeah. And there's another one nearby, which goes that way around. Like so. Nice and easy, solder those in. I'll stay with me for this bit. So nice big pads it's got. You need a bit of heat on both the leg and the pad. Present some solder. 
and it's and so on it's it's that easy but i mean hey you've just done a whole bunch of resistors so you already know how straightforward this is snip the legs off great that's those in next up next page what nine of 30 oh okay so i see sockets which are these fellas so these sit on the board in two spaces and uh, what's important is that we have the notch at the front matches up with the notch on the print yeah that's very important so that one goes in there this one goes around this way over here now what we have to do is solder them in but to do that we have to turn the PCB over and when you do that they fall out or at least one of them does so you've just got to work out your way of sorting that out. So I tend to just hold them in with my thumb and then kind of put them down carefully on the edge. And then they're there. Easy peasy. Absolutely no bother. And then generally speaking, I would tag in one, one pin and then just check it before soldering the whole lot in. Because if you make a mistake, it's really hard to unsolder or desolder uh, an entirely put in IC holder. In fact, you're more likely just to try to cut it out. So I'm holding down on the PCB just to make sure that that's flat and flush when the solder solidifies. Again, in the middle here, add a little bit of solder. I think I got, I I got away with that. <laughs> sure that that was exactly what I was hoping to do. Yeah, see, that's all right. That's all right. That's the right way around. That's the right way around. Cool. Solder the rest. These usually go nice and easy. You just stick the solder, stick the soldering iron on one side of the pin, on the pad up against the pin, solder on the other side. Sometimes like that, it just goes straight onto the iron, but hey, most of the time. It goes where you want it to go. Lovely, always give it a little check. See, there's a couple of them. <laughs> there's one or two there. They're a bit flat. I don't know whether I put enough solder on exactly. Oh, I don't know. They look all right. Yeah, no, they're fine. Ceramic capacitors. So there's five 100 nanofarad capacitors, which are labeled 104. Those are these little um, orangey fellas. I had another one over here somewhere. That's a 103. That's a one. That's a 104. That's a 104. 104. 104. 104. So that's five of those. So we're going to be putting those on. Oh, and look, it tells us where to put them. So I don't actually have to go back to the bill of materials at this point because it's telling me they're C4, C5, C10, C14, and C15. So that's cool. So C4. is there C5 14 and 15 so they're good as you bent the legs they shouldn't fall out when you turn it over Next, locate the 10 nanofarad capacitor, that's the 103, and do that at C18. That's all a bit wobbly, that one, but oh, it is straight. Maybe the screen print isn't exactly straight. Oh, well, who knows? Don't really know. Don't worry about it. 
it's not a problem. <laughs> C18. Uh, ba -ba -ba over here. Just that one to do by itself. <laughs> See, I put a whole load of solder on and none of it went on the actual part. It all just went on the iron. That's better. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cockrell. Good to know you're still alive. So now we've got a nice uh, picture of the board. Yep, that's all good. So next up we have the box capacitors. Now these are all of these blue things here. So these are all 100 nanofarad, I think. 1K63. Well, I say that. <laughs> 1K63. One K six three. It says on his one on his picture. I've got one N K one hundred. Let's see what else I've got. Okay. So that's a one K six three. So I've got one of those, two of those, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, five, six, seven, and eight places to put them in. Okay, so there's two which are different. So just be aware of that. Got to find the ones which actually have 1K63 written on them. And these go into all these other bits on here. So starting with C6. Now these are not electrolytic they're not um what's the word c9 they're not polarized so it doesn't matter which way around they go in unlike the barrel uh, capacitors which are and need to be the right orientation c13 down here they're a bit spiky 16 17, 21, good, that's all those fellas in, if you bent the legs out you should be able to turn it upside down and then rest it all on them and then solder all that lot in. And then there's two more with the 1NK100, and that's for C8 and C19. So these are these two that I had left over. Uh, have I put that in the wrong place? No, there's another big big one yet. Yeah, okay, hang on. I've got C7 there looking suspiciously empty. So there's C8. C19. Now, I could have done those all in the one go, really, but there's no there's no harm in breaking things down into smaller chunks just to ensure that you're doing the right bit in the right place and there's less chance of you getting it all muddled up. But, you know, you could have done the whole thing just from the bill of materials and that wouldn't have been a problem but good help like this is definitely worthwhile if you're less familiar look at that pictures and everything just keeps on going so those are in so let me go back to his picture up here yeah his c7 is also missing so we haven't done that one yet power regulator so 
we're now onto this three prong thing here I think this is a 78L05 78L05 says so on the thing don't mix it up with the transistor which is this fella here they are different but you can read the text on the on the actual thing so it shouldn't be a problem match the orientation put it in place and we're looking for U2 it's actually written on the board 78 LO5B yeah so you just need to what do you need to do pull that middle leg back a little bit <laughs> if you can get to it because it likes to have a not to be a sort of pronged and you've got the flat side and the flat side of the regulator that should all just go in there so that matches up yeah got that woggle it down a little bit spread it out a little bit bend the legs at the bottom so it reminds us that the pads are quite close together yeah which they are so it's possible to bridge um, so get solder that connects the two things together so be a bit aware of that but hey let's solder it straight in And now we're going to put the transistor in this fella it's a 3905 or 6 transistor fits the same way as a power regulator make sure it's the right way around and in the right place that's what's important so this one is also labeled on the board here 2N3906 and again you want to put that middle leg back a little bit in order to squeeze it in there you see the orientation the flat bit on the on the print and the flat bit on your transistor needs to go right and then it sort of squishes in because these legs are a little bit wider than it looks it's a bit it's a bit weird, it stands a little bit proud perhaps, but you should be able to get that in alright. Right, let's get that soldered. The Mylar mylar capacitor look at the size of that thing 68 nanofarad at c7 so this is the c7 thing goes in the gap over here again we can go any way around goes all the way in i mean what we're doing what we're following which is really great is we're doing everything in high order so we gradually get taller and taller as we go and that makes the turning over and the soldering of things far far easier if you're going up in high order so let's get this one in. Nice and easy. Box header. That's this thing. This is the power connector. This goes on up here. Now you can see on the board that that is where the key that corresponds to that chunk that's out the side here so it needs to go that way around also shows us where the red stripe is are you going to be able to see that when this is on top nah <laughs> so that's awesome but <laughs> um but what the shroud does around this is it means it can only go in one way around so you're not trying to put the red stripe from the power cable in the right way around because it can only go in one way around because of the shroud so it has to go that way and so the red stripe is down this end but I guess if you were just putting an unshrouded one on just putting the pins on then you would be able to see where it says red stripe so they're looking after themselves which I think is important there 
So that's cool. So, yeah, the notch is facing out from the PCB. Turn it over and solder in place. Uh, use some flux on the pins. Really? This will aid solder. Good idea to get some flux on parts like this where it takes longer to heat from the soldering iron to transfer. Okay. That's interesting. That's not something that I, I generally do. The the uh, solder I'm using generally has a whole ton of flux in it already. So I'm not putting extra stuff in. Now, this is not sitting down particularly flat. So... Had I thought about it, after everything I said about height, I would have done this before that green capacitor, because that's now a little bit higher, as you can see, than that. So that's a bit annoying. So what I'm going to do, what am I going to do? I'm going to use this little bit of foam that something came on, and I'm going to turn that over like that, so that that's the highest thing. And then I'm going to tag one corner of it, push it down to try to get it level, and then that should sort that out. So that's just going to go for the top corner here. So I'm holding it down. I'm trying to heat that up. Applying solder. Holding it down and then taking the solder iron off. Letting it cool. And that should be... That's pretty good. Oh, that's blown away. And that should be pretty good. See, that's flat all the way along. So I'll solder the rest of that now that it's set. Good, good. Moving on. Electrolytic capacitors. So these are polarized. That's the word I've been after. Polarized. Oh, I'm blowing around the place. And means they need to go the right way around. And you'll find that on each of them, it's actually marked negative and also that the positive one has the longer leg long leg positive short leg negative is my mantra and the positive and negative bits are marked on the PCB you can see where the little plus is and there's also a flat line and that goes against the um, negative side now are they all the same see it doesn't mention where they go which is which is a shame. I mean, I like I like the idea of specifying in each of your little little sections uh, which numbers on the board <laughs> you're going for. Otherwise, I've got to refer the way back up to the bit of materials, which is no biggie. But it was nice in the sections where it was mentioned um, in the build guide at the same time as a bit that you were on. Does that make sense? Uh, I think that would be the way the way forward for your manuals generally do that that's definitely the better the better option so uh, yeah I'm gonna go all the way back up to the bit of materials to check that these are all the same okay electrolytic cap here 10 microfarad there's five of them 10 microfarad, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, that's good. So they're all the same. And they go in C1, 2, 3, 11, and 12. The C1 is there. Long leg is positive. So it goes in the positive hole first and then down. So C1, C2. See that's C1. What did I just go in? I went into C12. That's not even it. <laughs> All right, so that whole C12. Sorry, I couldn't see the two because of the slight angle. But 11 and 12 are also these ones. So I'm putting them in the right place. So let's do 11 there as well. <laughs> check, check, double check, always check. Check again. And then one, two, and three are up here. Long leg positive. There's two, long leg positive. And three, which is here, long leg positive. Cool, right, let's put all that lot in. It's a little bit more unstable now, so you've got all these things sticking out of the front of it. So it does get a little bit wayward. And the pads on these capacitors are very much smaller. 
making it slightly more difficult to heat. So on the picture, that way up, those are all good. So now the pots. So in your kit there should be three T18s, yeah, and two plastic shafted Song Hui. Is that what they are? Okay, fair enough. So little trimmer knobs type style, and whereas these are the bigger, chunkier pots, there should be a 100, a 10, and a 25. So place the 100, see that 100, uh, at the R20. Oh, okay, so it's not on this side. So now we've got to flip over. We're now doing this side. So R20 is this one here. So it's going to go like that. Put those prongs in first. And then push firmly through and it should, it should do its thing. So the 10K one. This is the 10K one. R12 is here says also on the board mix 10k that's helpful and then finally 25k one it's going on r8 25 at the top here They are not wanting to go through. Oh, ah, Ooh, look at that. Oh, I bent, bent a leg. Bent a leg. Just be a little bit careful. These are not very strong, these particular legs on pots, I find. There we go, that's in there better. So, if you apply pressure, you will bend them. But then you have to apply pressure in order to get these legs in the holes. Okay, that's in. That's in. It says that you can swap the 25k one, this one here, for a 50k one if you want to have uh, noisier, slower delay times. Interesting. Okay, and then there's these two, and it says don't solder yet. Does it say solder for the other ones? Do not solder yet. So what we're doing is we're placing these, we're not soldering them because we want to use the front panel in order to make sure that they are all straight. So these are the same, B100s, B100s, and they go down the bottom end here. R21, this is also a B100. So R5. These numbers don't make any sense to you, mate. But hey, hey, never mind. Do not solder. Right. Momentary switch. This fella here. That's going right in the middle. Now it seems to have a a slight flatness on one side, which I imagine is going to meet that. Make sure the flat edge meets matches the silk screen. Like that. It's got to be in, but it's also got to be free to move. Good. Still not soldering. Remove the nuts from the jacks so that they're all got nothing on them. Could have done that before we put them in. Ooh, I suppose we could have done that. Hmm. Like so. So they are naked. And, oh, put the patch sockets in. <laughs> didn't mention that in the manual. They just appeared. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, mono jacks. Remove the nuts from the supplied jacks and place them on the PCB as shown. Oh, okay, so I'm actually talking about something completely different. So I've removed the nuts off the pots, which is also something I think I had to do. And what they were actually talking about is these and taking the nuts off those, which is also fair enough, obviously. So with these, they've got three three pins use that forward leg the one that's sticking out put that in the hole first 
and then push up against it and that gives just enough sort of grip to hold them in there nicely good now you want to put the panel on place the panel over the parts fix in place using the nuts and finger tighten so let me put this down over here so it fits over everything give it a bit of a wobble and then it's saying put these nuts on now is this ever going to have to come off possibly not but it's difficult to say in the moment without going through it with a fine tooth comb so we're, I'm just going to put one on the top here finger tight and I'm going to put some of the these fellas on I would say that's probably enough you don't need to put them all on particularly if you're going to have to take that off again if there's a problem but oh, who knows who knows <laughs> okay they're all finger tight good stick a bit of electrical tape over the button to stop it from slipping forward Oh, so it's not going to drop out. I see. So, uh, alright, I've got a bit of tape here. So I'm just going to tape the button. I'm not going to push it down. I'm just going to make sure that it doesn't drop out when I turn this over in order to solder. Got it? So it's suggesting that when you solder, you solder one leg and then check. That's all fine. The metal potentiometer should be okay to solder all the legs straight away, but double check first. Make sure there's no thing on the base needs to be trimmed off no that's all that's all going on there fine and they're also suggesting bending these little legs here in order to give it greater stability I think you can just solder to it I think that's all right rather than fiddling with that but you know as you like as you like but what I will do I will do that switch probably first then we're talking about checking and the ICs. So the idea is that you just turn this over and you solder it. That's that's the plan. So as we're now turned the whole thing over, we are soldering amongst all these other components. So you, so you can. There's a lot of potential here for melting things by accident. So accidentally leaning your soldering iron against the IC holder or against a capacitor or something like that. So just be wary of what you're doing and go easy. Be aware of your surroundings, poke that in there, let it heat up, and that's the button. So I'm just going to take that off, make sure that's moving, which it is. So that's fine, happy with that. So with the rest of them what I'll do is I'll solder one thing and then I'll just check and then solder the rest. That's the plan. See you after. Okay, the ICs, which are these two fellas here. If you have a trusty multimeter, it'd be a great time to check that the power, that the correct power is going to the correct places. There are no shorts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is, but um, the effort that's required in plugging this into a uh, into something in order to power it. I mean. It's not the end of the world, is it? I could do that, and then all right, I'm going to try. I'm going to attempt to do what they ask me to, rather than being stubborn, <laughs> as isn't often the case. I'm actually going to try to follow instructions. So what am I doing? So I'm getting a multimeter. You don't necessarily have to have a multimeter to make all this function, I don't think. So trusty multimeter is what it suggests. Plug your out cable in the model, preferably using your own bench power supply. Yeah, well, of course, or a small powered case. Yes, you should get 
plus 12 and minus 12 between pin 4 and pin 11. And you should get plus 5 over there on pin 1. I guess we're going on to DC voltage. What it's not telling me is where I should put my black, my black ground. Now I know that the the leg on the patch socket is ground, the one that's sticking out. So I can attach my black probe. See that down here to to one of these legs here, so I can touch that there. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to assume that's going to work. So let's turn our machine on. And I should be getting minus 12 here and plus 12 there. So on pin 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'll put that onto my earth. Pin 4, put that there. I'm getting 9. <laughs> okay. That's just super. I got this the right way up. Am I using the right one? Yeah, it's that one. One, two, three, four. I should get minus 12 on the one on the other side. See, that's nearly minus 12 there. Whereas this side... I'm getting 9.5. Is that important? I do not know. And then down here, this should be plus 5, which it is. Now I wonder whether it's anything to do with the pots. So if I was to make all of these fully on, would that make any difference to the voltage that's going to that particular spot? No, I get 9.5. So why am I getting, why am I not getting 12, is the question. Why am I not getting 12? See, this is one of those situations where you might have to un, undo a thing to check to see whether anything is, has um, shorted. Well, I mean, having too few volts is no bad thing. It's not going to overheat or blow up or anything like that. So as far as that's concerned, I'm, I'm kind of happy with it. So I think what I'll do is I'll keep on going and we're just going to see what happens. Okay, I'm saying if it's checked, then go and plug in the ICs, make sure that they're the right way around and move on to finishing the module. So here we go. So we've got these two chips, same sort of size. Now they are labeled on the board and you can see through which ones they are. Now I've got this magic tool, which helps me straighten the legs so that they pop in nicely. So this one here is the PT2399, PT2399. Make sure it's the right way around, which is the little nick out of the side of that. Needs to go with the nick on the IC holder. Don't be fooled by the dot on that side. So that's pointing essentially up towards that capacitor. Squish it in nice and firmly. This one also goes up that way around into there. Like so. So finally, turn them all over to the left and fit their knobs. Make sure that's screwed on nice and tight now so three knobs a big one at the top so there's no like it looks like a continuous so you can just kind of put it at the uh it says 35 minute position so that's half past so 35 is going to be about there i think you should just go for it then does it push on are you kidding oh no it goes on there we go all the way around that's not too bad these two actually have something to point for let me go like that, and that one. that's similar on that one. Oh, i completely 
<laughs> I got that messed up. This is completely wrong. I hadn't turned it all the way to the left or I'd done something. So now look, it's all over the place. Oh, I don't know if I can get that off. Okay, yeah. All right. Second chances. Second chances. Panel. Oh, close enough. Close enough. <laughs> close enough. Right, well done. You've done it. And we'll plug things in and see what happens. So it's a playable delay. Usually found on guitar pedals, blah, 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 blah. Lock button, which when pressed, locks the feedback in place for cool effects. Well, we should try it out. We should definitely try it out. Good, and I will do that. But first, I'm going to go and have some lunch. Then I'll be back and we'll plug it in and see what happens. So here we go. We're going to plug it in and hope that there's no smoke. No smoke is the plan at this point. So the cable goes in like so. Oh, Cockrell's decided to join us. This is going to plug in here. And as is this the first turn on with the chips in, I'm not going to screw it in so I can check that it doesn't catch fire. <laughs> Okay, seems to be all right. <laughs> Slightly disappointed that there's no LED. I like an LED on a delay just to, just as a reassurance that that's matching up with the timing and other bits and pieces. But hey, let's not worry about it. I've got here the Erica Synth EDU DIY little synth voice, which is giving me a, a sequence. And I guess what we do is we plug that into the in and take the output back in and kind of see what happens so we've gone we've gone in level feedback level mix lock level i suppose lk i guess is about this lock feedback thing definitely something happening there Okay, so the, the lock level, AK level, seem to, to, to have something to do with this button for the locked feedback. Whereas feedback level here seems to be generally speaking.
actually quite a lot of fun. <laughs> I like a good delay. I'm a sucker for a good delay. Every time. Ah! Right, I just wanted to bring in a, like a keyboard or something, just to uh, make it, yeah, to play it, to play it. So how is this connected? Let's connect it to there. Let's just see if I can. Okay, it's a bit of a mess, but we're there. See if I can put a little bit of CV into the timing, just for fun. sample and hold, although that's quite funny. Let's just take
So there you have it, the LK delay, or perhaps the lock delay might be how you're supposed to say it. I don't know. From Axis Modular, thank you very much. It's a good, simple, straightforward kit. Really good instructions, uh, I have to say. So if you're a beginner at this and you're looking for something you know, interesting to build, then this is definitely worth a shot, I think. And then at the end of the day, you get a really nice delay. Can't have enough delays. I love delays, have them all over the place. And I never seem to have enough. <laughs> There's always, they're always working, doing their thing. But what I quite like about this, the button's good, that the lock function is good. It means that you can grab hold of something and let it play, or just, just make it spin off into distortion quite nicely without, having to to mess everything else about it's just momentarily on and then it's gone which is great a little bit of cv control over time yeah that's always fun otherwise it's a very turnable very playable little knobby thing hmm. yeah so great yeah good simple straightforward no worries the thing i had with the voltage earlier i gave uh, access module a shout and they said uh should be all right <laughs> there could be a short you know, it should be 12, ideally, but 9.5 will work Will work well. I mean, if you're having problems, then, then go through and do a bit of resoldering, which I might well do. That means taking the front panel off, which is a bit of a, a pain. But I might do that and just have a look to see whether I've bridged something somewhere or something's not quite soldered in as well as it should be. But it works fine, seems to work fine. So from troubleshooting point of view, it seems to be very forgiving, <laughs> I would say. You can get the kit from Thonk for about 100 quid, I think. Decent, I would say. Very decent. Hope that's helpful. In the meantime, go make some tunes.